Hello and welcome to JKEV, I'm Joe, and we're back at the 2022 Chicago Auto Show. Uh, tonight it's for the First Look for Charity, so a great charity event. We're just gonna take a walk around, go look at some electric vehicles, highlight some other ones we might walk by, and just uh, see what there is to offer at the auto show this year. So let's go ahead and take a look. We're over here at the Ford booth. This is right inside the front door. So some great uh, expeditions right here. But just on the other side of this expedition is the F-150 Lightning, one of the vehicles we are the most excited for. So with the Lightning starts at around $42,000 and uh, can escalate up to $95,000 really quickly for a fully loaded Platinum. Really cool truck. Uh, 130 kilowatt hour battery with the big model. So pretty cool, 300 miles of range, 10,000 pounds of towing, so pretty serious vehicle. These, these should hit dealers here pretty soon in the next uh, three to five months, I'd say. And now let's go over here. There's some Ford GTs up ahead. They're pretty cool. There's some music about to get started. It's a, a pretty fun event. Lots of food being passed around, a couple tasty beverages. Here's the Ford GT, and there's a, a replica that they made right here. Pretty cool looking. Uh, Supercar. So this is like the first unofficial night of the auto show. Uh, the last couple days were just media days. So I was here all day shooting with a bunch of these cars. Mustang Mach-E right here. And then the Mach-E GT Performance is to the right in Cyber Orange. You guys, uh, we have a ton of content coming on the Mach-E. Drove, got to drive the GT and GT Performance out in Los Angeles. So it was a pretty great experience. Haven't gotten around to editing those videos yet. We've had so much content coming lately, but that's one of, uh, definitely one of the cars that's on our short list. We're pretty excited about the opportunity to potentially purchase one of those, especially the Performance model, because the MagnaRide suspension uh, really makes it a lot more comfortable. Ford E-Transit over there. Bunch of Corvettes right up here on the right. I'm a big fan of the orange. I don't know why, the orange is the new color. Really <laughs> orange is the new black. <laughs> uh, the Mustang was in the orange right there, looked great. And now here, this Corvette looks outstanding. This is the Z06. And then uh, just up ahead, we're gonna have the all new uh, 2024 Chevy Silverado electric. This truck is pretty incredible on the numbers. Uh, it competes with the Ford F-150 Lightning, but in some ways, it's really to the next level, being that it has the 200 kilowatt, 800 volt battery system that the Hummer has. So much faster charging, uh, same, same zero to 60 time, but the range too is the big one. 400 miles of range out of this vehicle. Pretty outstanding for a truck as big as it is. Starts at $42,000 for the base model. That won't come for a couple of years. Uh, the fully loaded model can escalate to, I think, $105,000. Looks pretty good. Yeah, blue's a good color for this truck. Oh, yeah. One thing to highlight that's pretty cool compared to the F-150, I can lift up the camera for you, is uh, in the back here, it features the Chevy, the mid-gate, kind of similar to what the uh, Avalanche used to have. That allows longer, like uh, longer lumber and stuff like that to fit inside the vehicle. There you go. But now let's uh, head over to, towards Nissan, Hyundai, that's all over here. We just kinda wanna do a quick walk around. We don't wanna end up two hours later still filming. <laughs> we wanna enjoy our night at some point. Over here, some of the Jeeps, before we get to Hyundai, I'll take a quick peek over here. Jeep has the 4xe, so that's a plug-in hybrid. They have the Wrangler, uh, then of course there's the Pacific, Chrysler Pacifica, which has been a plug-in hybrid for a few years now. And then they now have the Grand Cherokee plug-in hybrid. I'm interested in what you guys think. Uh, comment below, do you think we should try to cover more plug-in hybrids? Do you think we should stick to uh, electric vehicles? Let us know, we want to know kind of which direction take the channel to expand to more vehicles or just stay completely EV focused. For us, we owned a Chevrolet Volt for a couple, for three years and we grew to not like the plug-in hybrid lifestyle as much. We like the full EV life a little bit more don't have to plug the car in as often as we used to with the Volt every night we had to plug in the Volt. So a little bit more inconvenience in my opinion, but I uh, want to know th your thoughts for sure. So now we're over here at Hyundai. We're gonna go take a look at the Ionic 5. It's the 
new all electric off the uh, eGMP, the eGum platform. So this and the Kia EV6 are basically sister cars. So they have it here in teal and then they have a flat gray color. I think this is one of the best back, back of a car styling of uh, any car out right now. I just love the like 8-bit kind of 80s Mario kind of thing they got going on here. <laughs> Here's the charge port. Oh, this one's locked. Oh, because that one might be open. Yeah. So these are limited models. So that's why you get the 20-inch rims. Uh, they are all-wheel drive. So range is only 256 miles, I think. There's the charging right there. One interesting thing, too, I, I like about this vehicle is the uh, couple more brands are starting to put some sort of indicator of what the charge state of charge is on the outside. Makes it useful on a quick glance to see what it is, not have to go on the app, not have to go inside. From a quick glance, you can see what your state of charge roughly is. Do another thing to point out in these vehicles, the door handles, pretty cool how they kind of pop out. They have a nice texture to grab. And then the white interior is pretty cool. Oh, Christina's just pointing out the uh, the thigh support for the reclining while you're while you're charging. <laughs> what do you guys like more, the uh, the teal paint or this new flat paint? Uh, the same same question I'll be asked over at at Kia. They have like a white uh, wind version of the Kia EV6. Then they have a fully loaded GT line, which has uh, kind of this similar matte paint. I do love that a lot of vehicles are a lot of electric vehicles. I love that a lot of electric vehicles are specializing in rims that are just a little bit different to try to help differentiate themselves because so many of these vehicles drive the same as one another. We'll have full walk around reviews of that vehicle soon. Hopefully, we'll be driving it not too long from now as well. One one other thing I was going to highlight the biggest factor of that car is if you're a road tripper, uh, you get two years of 30 minute unlimited 30 minute DC fast charge electric from America as well as it goes from 10% to 80% in only 18 minutes. So pretty huge. Here's the Hyundai Kona. So this is kind of the outgoing Hyundai electric car and the Ionix, the new one, kind of coming in to take over. Kind of the next generation, should say. There's an EV test track over here. So they're gonna have the BMWs running around, uh, the EV6, the Ionic 5. So great opportunity to ride along in one of these vehicles because these vehicles are going to be pretty hard to get at dealers to even get a test drive so sometimes just doing a little ride along will be uh, great to kind of get a first impression of the vehicle <laughs> now we're head over to uh nissan or well volkswagen's right here maybe we hit volkswagen and then walk up to nissan so the, with the ID4 this year, the, the changes for 2022, uh, 135 kilowatt charging instead of 125. And they say a little more range. They haven't announced what the range increase is. I don't know if they're unlocking more of the battery pack or if it's just more efficient, but uh, either way, improvement of range is welcome. We're still waiting on that software update though. So uh, we're hoping that the software update comes to our cars, not just the 2022s. But otherwise, no real changes for the ID4 this year. <laughs> but now let's head over to Nissan, check out the uh, Aria. We've been waiting to see this vehicle for a while. It's, uh, these con it's gone through, unfortunately, uh, quite a bit of constant delays. And uh, it looks like it, it finally is kind of getting on track to be here later this year. Um, unfortunately, this vehicle is still a prototype, so it's not even production ready. One aspect of the Aria that's interesting is uh, ground up EV with no frunk. A lot of people are quick to not love that as uh, that idea. Well, the, uh, the interesting thing though is because of the sloping of the hood, there's not really space for a frunk. And then also what's interesting about the Aria, it's front wheel drive if you get the single motor. So if you opt to not get the dual motor E-Force all wheel drive, it ends up being a front wheel drive vehicle. Not sure how I feel about that, but uh, that's that's the route Nissan decided to go. The other thing that's uh, 
I'm not sold on is it's only 130 kilowatt char charging, peak charging speed. So we're not sure what the charging curve is. That might be better, but we we'll really have to stay tuned and see what different versus ID4, Ionic, Kia EV6. There's just so many vehicles out there right now. What's going to make Aria be the one that, what's going to be the detail that kind of helps them branch away and, and make them unique? So I think there's just two more brands to take a quick peek at, or three. There's uh, Hummer, BMW, oh, four. Hummer, BMW, Kia, and then Subaru. So I think we'll finish with Subaru. They're, they're, uh, uh, experience is quite immersive. I definitely want to show that off. But since we're at BMW, here is the BMW iX M60. This is the 2023 model. This, uh, what's, what I like about what BMW is doing is they have the i4, which is kind of more conservatively styled. It just looks like a regular four series with four doors though. The iX is much more progressive. So if you want that more unique kind of look, the iX gives that to you. And if you want something more traditional, then the i4 is the one for you. Both of these vehicles will have 200 kilowatt charging. Uh, the i4 is 10 to 80% in, I believe, 38 minutes. And then the, or that's the iX. The i4 is 10 to 80% in just 31 minutes. It's the I, I, so of all the vehicles I saw today, this was, I think, my favorite. I was uh, pretty impressed by just the packaging that BMW was able to get, especially since it's not a ground up EV. They kind of shooed this into uh, their, their four series platform. And I think they did a really good job. Still getting 300 miles of range out of it. This is the all wheel drive. So uh, definitely lose some range. I think you lose, I think it's 260, 270 miles of range. This one, this model is $65,000. Uh, the iX is $80,000. And this model starts at $55,000. So pretty wide spectrum as always with BMW. As you start checking the options boxes, the price goes up pretty quickly. And since we're right here, might as well take a look at the all new Kia EV6. So there's a GT line here, and then there's a wind right over there on the other side. That's more of a base model. I really like the seats in the GT line. So this has all the same stats as the Ionic. So it's a 77 kilowatt battery. If, if you get the big battery, 58 kilowatt, kilowatt hours. If you get the small battery. Um, I just feel this has a much more sporty styling. I'm a fan of the way they kind of styled the interior, the dash, the whole where the shifter is, power button. I think they kind of took this to the next level. Also, the, the sunroof on this is a sunroof that opens rather than just a glass roof in the Ionic 5 that does not open. Still tons of practical storage in both of these, and you really can't go wrong. If you are a road tripper, the downside of this vehicle is only comes with 1,000 kilowatt hours from Electrify America of charging. That's only about 3,000 to 4,000 miles. If you opt for the Ionic, it's that unlimited charging for two years. So kind of have to weigh your options there. This is the eGump platform, which both the Ionic and Kia are built on. And then as I was saying, right around the corner is the basic wind model. So that's the that was the GT line. Here's the wind. So this is gonna probably be the more mainstream, what most people will end up driving home. So same all wheel drive or rear wheel drive, same kind of packaging. This does get seven miles more range than the Ionic. So a little it's bit more. It's very long, it's like a very long vehicle. Yeah, yeah, it's the same size as the uh, Mach-E or Ionic. So they kind of, it's deceiving. You don't realize how big these vehicles are until you actually get right up next to them. Especially when you, uh, you look at the, like the leg room. When I have the full reviews, be sure to check out my leg room in the back and these is just outstanding, pretty impressive. Right over here is the uh, Kia, Kia Nero. Not sure what Kia's plans are with the Nero and the Ionic, or sorry, the Nero and the Kona, how long they plan on keeping those around, whether they're just gonna lower the price. Um, Cause this kind of old battery technology, only 77 kilowatt peak charging speed. But if you just want an around town grocery getter, it does an excellent job of that. We have a, a Kia Nero hybrid that we'll be getting rid of this summer. And we've been pretty happy with it. We have about 60,000 miles on it. So it's been, a, it's been a good car to us. Also uh, comment down below what your favorite vehicle is or which one upcoming vehicle you're most excited to see out on the roads. I'm kind of so torn. There's so many vehicles I like now that EV6 is on my list, that BMW i4, really like that. The iX is just a, an intense, like amazing machine. All the trucks is gonna be, cool to start seeing them, especially like the Hummer, the Lightning, the Silverado, 
the Cybertruck whenever it comes, the, the Rivian. This is the Kia EV9 concept. So this is kind of a little bit longer than the EV6. This is kind of similar to the uh, Kia Telluride in size. So this is their future plan for, it's just a concept, it's not a final design yet. Obviously you can tell by cameras being a, a replacement of mirrors. Uh, you can't have cameras as mirrors in the US yet. Interesting styling though, they like the uh, like the rims, the kind of triangle pattern they're going here. Very, very angular. That's kind of been, it's interesting because the angular design has kind of been Hyundai's thing for a while of kind of look at the Z, kind of sharp angles on the door of the Ionic 5. Kia's been more kind of traditional aggressive. This is a, a big step forward for them to kind of go to more of this interesting design language. And then right over here is clearly the biggest vehicle of anything on display at this entire auto show. <laughs> the, the, the thing we started looking at with the Hummer is we were gonna, we're gonna spend close to 80 grand with the Lightning, or if we end up getting a Silverado or a Rivian, the Hummer starting price is 80 grand. So when you start looking and it's not that much more expensive than when you start optioning up any of the other vehicles. This has the same battery uh, as the Silverado, but because of the bigger tires and kind of setup, it's only 350 miles of range. But even with that, 350 miles of range and 200 kilowatt charging and a 200 kilowatt hour battery, that's substantial, pretty substantial. And it's a really good looking vehicle. One thing I like about it is the roof pops off kind of like a Jeep, and then you can store that up in the front. So they kind of all four panels kind of twist and pop off. And so if you're off-roading, you can uh, get that Jeep lifestyle kind of convertible feel. <laughs> so now we're just gonna walk over to Subaru, which in my opinion is the best uh, booth on display at the auto show. Uh, they, kind of, they kind of had something similar a couple of years ago and uh, yeah, just pretty, just pretty impressive how they, the amount of detail that they went into with this whole like immersive light experience. It was snowing earlier today, like they had simulated snow in there. So just pretty cool. What are your thoughts on the uh, EV6 versus the Ionic 5? I like the EV6 a lot better. Yeah. I like the style more. So you sat in both of them. Did, how did the seats and driving position feel? Because you usually like the SUV styling which means you have the more of that up high commanding view, kind of like how you would in the BMW iX. And so the EV6, you definitely kind of sit more down in the car, kind of like how your Elantra used to be. Yeah. Uh, how did, does that impact you? Or are you just like the styling so much more that you're like, I don't care, I want it. I feel like it's an exception <laughs> this time. <laughs> true, true, true. Here's um, the supercar garage. So there's a couple of Rolls Royces here. There's a Lamborghini right there. Actually, three Lamborghinis in a row, including the, the Lamborghini SUV. Got, got, <laughs> gotta love the, uh, gotta love the Rolls. Is there any car in the world that is better to be electrified than a Rolls Royce? They spend all this money to make it quiet and comfortable, and all they gotta do is just put an electric motor in. <laughs> All right, so we're over here at Subaru now, which like I said, in my opinion, the best display. I mean, just kind of take in everything they got going on here. They have trees, they brought the outside in. That's, that's what they did. There's a tree house up here. <laughs> and then right around the corner, there'll be the all new Solterra. So the Solterra, uh, to Subaru and Toyota made a partnership. So they're making the Toyota BR4Z and then the Subaru Solterra, uh, same 67 kilowatt hour battery, we don't know too many facts about it. We know that it should start around 37,000, probably gets into the mid 40s once you add some options. Uh, Subaru is only available in all wheel drive, whereas the Toyota, you can get front wheel drive. So the Toyota can be uh, 250 miles of range, whereas the Subaru is only 220 miles of range because that's what the all wheel drive is. Still a prototype vehicle, so there's some things that might change over time. Another thing to point out is this on the wheel wells here. They went a little crazy with the uh, flat matte plastic to make it look rugged and off-road. Of course, if it's a Subaru, they got a roof rack for you there too. But I was genuinely surprised when I sat in it, uh, how actually comfortable and nice it felt in there. I was 
it was definitely a step above. I, I was kind of looking at it being, you know, what are, what are the, what is they trying to do here? Oh, where's my, where is it? <laughs> I don't know, someone popped the hood. I was going to see if I could get into the, see if there was a frunk. There we go. So no frunk, just electric motors and a lot of electronics, which makes sense because all, all, like the other cars we pointed out, not that big of a hood. There's not much space to put a frunk. Also, I, as I pointed out in my walk around video, kind of as a Mustang Mach-E design language with this little, the hexagon, hexagon grill kind of put into the front. But uh, with that, pretty much a wrap for the 2022 Chicago Auto Show. So if you haven't already, please do like and subscribe. We have, uh, so this will be the first video to go out. Then we have walk arounds of pretty much all of these videos throughout the week. And uh, we're just gonna slowly let those out over time as we have time, as I have time to edit them. I uh, will prioritize whatever vehicles you guys are most interested. We'll make sure to get those out in time. And uh, stay tuned and take care until next time. Thanks.